There it is. Good morning, everybody. I'm a little bit earlier today. Um, trying recording again on my phone and live on Facebook on my MacBook, and hopefully I can um, upload the recording. We're going to see, just because it's been a week or however long. So, September 12th, Happy Monday is here again. And this morning, we're going to talk about peace on earth. Doesn't that sound grand? Doesn't that sound fabulous? So, the scripture is from 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress. Then I am strong. And it's so cool. It's so cool how the, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God work together with us. Because we just, and it wasn't part of our lesson. It's just something we wound up looking up because it related to something else. Well, I looked it up because I was determined to find where it was in Sunday school yesterday. Because uh, what our lesson said was, how does God use you in spite of your imperfections? And this verse immediately came to my mind, but I didn't know where it was, and I found it um, by the grace of God, because I really, I thought, it's in the uns, I call them the uns, you know, Romans, and Galatians, and Ephesians, and Corinthians, and so on. Of course, I don't have them in order, but, um, you know, the imperfections, uh, how they make his perfection shine even brighter, and it's... Weakness is one of those imperfections, a big one of those imperfections, and his strength, such a big part of his perfection. So, that's really cool that we come, Lynn and Becky, uh, Amber, if you watch, isn't that neat that it's the verse of the day today. Okay, so Billy Graham has this to say about it. Every generation witnesses terrifying world events. The 21st century was inaugurated with the horrific 9-11 tragedy that set the whole world on edge. Today, nations are in turmoil as governments struggle with how to defeat global terrorism. People are frantic, searching for solutions. There is only one solution. Don't we know it, people of God, children of God? Don't we know it? Born again, soldiers in the Lord's army, don't we know there is only one solution? And it is found in the righteous ruler, the man of peace. Jesus holds the key to man's problems, which are bound up in one little word, sin. And this is so cool because, yes, well, yeah, yesterday morning, I almost said last night, but no, it was yesterday morning, our, um, preacher that we had that filled in for our pastor, um, another brother in Christ that we know well, anyways, he preached on that very thing, how destructive and demolishing sin is, how sin takes you down through it and does not let you go, you cannot get away from it by yourself, it requires the blood of Jesus, it requires Jesus' mighty hand. Um, and the sacrifice he's already made, the debt he's already paid for us. Um, so, how cool. I have talked with people from all walks of life about how they deal with their fears. Some turn to alcohol. Been there and tried that. Others turn to mystic religions and amusement. I say to them, come to Christ. I do too, Billy. Y'all come to Christ. The devil has a counterfeit for everything that the Lord offers. And when you don't come to Christ, I guarantee you he's there flagging that counterfeit in your face and alcohol is one of them. Weed is one of them, other drugs, yeah. Um, trying, to, trying to fulfill in you what only the Holy Spirit can feel because God made you that way with that hollow there for him to feel and um, there's so many counterfeits that you can run to and they like 
they entrap you. Um, they enslave you. You know, alcoholism. You think you gotta have more, you gotta have more. It's so it's so cool. Thank you, God, for the confirmation and the reinforcement of this word again today because it so matches with Brother Billy's sermon. So I have talked okay, I did that. I say to them, come to Christ. He will overcome your fears. He will strengthen you to stand strong in the face of trials and disappointment. Yes, he will. In the midst of cataclysmic events, there is peace that passes all understanding. That passes understanding, he says. So true. You know, I touch every once in a while on Barry and my son, Barry and Kai, and the peace of knowing that he was out of this dangerous place and in the arms of Jesus when I cried out to Jesus and he let me know that he was. Oh, you have little faith. Oh, you have little faith. Um, he let me know that he was. You know, that peace. To be able to praise God um, that he's not here anymore. To know that he's already where I pleaded for him to go where I pleaded for him to be. Um, no, it's not the way I wanted God to answer the prayer, but by all means, he answered it. And in a bigger and better way than I ever could have imagined. Um, that's peace. That's peace. It defies the odds. It doesn't make sense to the world. It doesn't make sense. Um, it's foolishness to them. But to us, it's our salvation. Um, it confounds the wise. So, peace that passes understanding. People think they want peace in the world, but what they really need is peace in their hearts. Exactly, exactly that. If that happened, there would be peace in the world as well. Exactly. So, searching for all these solutions um, within what our minds can come up with has just been centuries of waste, chasing our tails. Um, meanwhile, you know, inventing more and more um, destructive things, however convenient they seem to make life, they destruct. And uh, when it's not placed in God's hands and left there, then the devil does his counterfeit thing and makes it a mockery and makes it destruction and destroys whatever he can with it. So, um, you know, technology is a big one. Yeah, it makes a lot happen a lot faster. There's like an unlimited nearly number of people that could see this and hear the word of God just because of these devices and um, the internet. But look at what our children have in their hands. Um, we don't protect them from it. Well, we're not naive about it um, as well. That's that's sexualizing babies. That's criminalizing babies. That's all the enemy. And um, we have the tools to combat that. We have the tools to prevent that. But it almost feels trapped because it's it's a big sacrifice once you once you taste of that that thing, whatever that thing is for you. There are several things. The convenience. Um, a lot of it's addictive for us too, and we're not willing to let can entirely let go of it in order that it doesn't fall into their hands. So, yeah, I took that <laughs> in a whole different direction, didn't I? But what is the only hope for peace on earth? Peace in each heart, peace in every heart. So, yeah, like I was saying, we have what it takes to combat that. Um, destruction and lack of peace but we keep it to ourselves um, out of fear and you know I just read something on my daily dose email daily news whatever the poor the poor whatever it's called the pour over I think it's it's a good uh, Christian based news source that just gives you facts without all the yaya -ya opinions and stuff but anyways um, how did it go? If you fear God, you don't fear anything else. 
but I think I've posted, I've copied and pasted and posted it. Um, but if you don't fear God, then you fear everything else. And that's exactly where this world is at. So many don't fear God, um, you know, don't believe. And he's, they don't believe, they don't want the truth. So he has sent a strong delusion. And um, so there's not a fear of him there. So they're afraid of everything else. And hustling and bustling, trying to figure out how to solve these problems that he is the only solution to. But we're the ones that can change that by letting him be seen in us. Um, it all it comes back to the church and where they went this way when they should have went this way, or we, we. Um, so it's... It's a big picture, and it's there's a lot to it, but yet the answer is simple. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I hope I'm not talking too quiet and not even being heard. I don't see anybody watching to, to ask. So, because um, I forgot to put my earbuds on. Yeah, I don't see any comments. I'm not even really sure where to look for them. Yeah, there they, there they would be comments, but it's empty. So, I guess nobody's watching, but you'll see it later. Hopefully, you'll hear it. Um, like I said, I forgot to put my AirPods in. But for that reason, I am going to go ahead and stop, I guess. I have, well, let me look and just see if there's more in 2 Corinthians 12 that goes along with what we're talking about. I'm quite sure that was the end of the chapter there talking about... Uh, when I am weak, then I am strong. Because it's it's when we're weak enough, desperate enough in our weakness to let go of the control and to follow him. And it's all right here. What to do, how you know, it's it's all there. Um okay. No, that wasn't. That was the end of a section because mine's got them section with the subtitles, so um We can go back, and I think we were in some of this about boasting. I'm going to open my book again and see something else. Boasting in the in the Lord, right? Yesterday or the day before, about boasting in the Lord. So, anyways, chapter 12, boasting is necessary. It is not profitable, but I will move on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who was called up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether he was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. I know that this man, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which a human being is not allowed to speak. Those words that I feel like in this. Um, the first thing that came to my mind was we were talking the other day at church about how indescribable God is, how amazing he is. I think I touched on that Thursday because we had talked about it Wednesday night. So those inexpressible words that Paul, we you know, uh, heard when he was caught up into heaven. That's what it makes me think of, the words that describe the magnificence of our God that we don't even have in our vocabulary. Um, maybe in our maybe in our heavenly language vocabulary, maybe in our tongues, but not in our, you know, legible that we know about um, vocabulary. So anyway, a human being is not allowed to speak. I will boast about this person. Well, and it says a human being is not allowed to speak, and we are allowed to speak in our tongue, so, eh. Anyway, I will boast about, but actually that's the Holy Spirit speaking through us. Okay, I'm arguing with myself. Okay, I will boast about this person, but not about myself, except of my weaknesses. For I want to boast, if I want to boast, I wouldn't be a fool, because I would be telling the truth. But I will spare you, so that no one can credit me with something beyond what he sees in me or hears from me, especially because of the extraordinary revelations. Therefore, so that I would not
not exalt myself. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to torment me so that I would not exalt myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in your weakness, in weakness. And that power, in other translations, is strength, um, which I think it was in the one I read in Billy Graham's Devo. So therefore, I will gladly, most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Because our strength is nothing, and his strength is everything. His strength is the only true strength, just like his love is the only true love. The hope in him is the only real hope. Peace that we're talking about today is the only real peace. That peace in your heart. That peace nobody can take. If it was just peace around you, it could change at any time anyway, right? Circumstances, um, the environment, an attack from another country. I mean, anywhere from a large scale to a small scale, that peace can be interrupted. But in here, there's a peace that passes all understanding that can't be touched. It can't be touched. You can get your eyes off of it for a moment, but it's there. It's still there um, when you stay after him, pursuing him with your whole heart. Um, that peace is there. So be encouraged in that this morning. Have a happy, great Monday. I'm going to hopefully try to get there a little early. I get a head start this morning. I don't know. I just feel like maybe I need a few extra minutes today. We'll see how it goes. But y'all have a great day. See you tomorrow.